Hello. Hello, mate. How you doing? I was on time this time. You were, <laughs> you were, but my Wi-Fi wasn't working, so I couldn't get the video to come on. Uh, but it is now. Hello, Ziggy. You are the best. Ziggy wasn't impressed with that delay. Oh well. well she's a good dog. She's a good dog. Right. Let's talk about things. So, with um, lockdown uh, happening, uh, Swain says hello to Ziggy. Uh, that's good. With lo with um, with people. He says hello, Swain. Hello, Ziggy. You're the best dog. <laughs> you are the best dog. Hey, hey, Swain. If you could tweet about this again, that would be amazing. Because then I can retweet it. That would be super helpful if you've got the time. Otherwise, I will do it in a minute. So, um, yeah. So lockdown. They keep talking about easing it, right? So we're going to be, people are going to be taking dogs out again. Um, yeah. Ziggy's a she, actually, Swain. Um, funny enough. People always think she's a boy, but she's not. She's a girl dog. Um, she's old girl. Yeah. So, yeah, people are going to be taking, going out for longer periods into the world. Um, it's a completely different issue whether we think that's a good idea. I don't necessarily. But they are. So I think maybe we should talk a bit about um, dogs and shops and going back out among people um, and, and how people should be thinking about that. Queen is now calling Ziggy old. Oh, I'm very dare you. Oh, <laughs> she's quite, she's not young. <laughs> she's not young. I mean, she's not strictly old, but she's not young either. Uh, she can't hear, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so th that's what I, I, I want to address is that, that question of, okay, we're going to be taking dogs, dogs are going to be back out, and also just about dogs and shops and taking them into different environments that aren't your home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah talk, talk <laughs> about that. What, what bit do you actually want me to cover? Well, I want to talk about you taking your dog out, say, and you stop at a shop, for instance. Like, right. some people leave their dogs tied up outside. Okay, okay, you okay, know, okay, I'm with you. I, I, yeah, I want I'm to know with about, you know, how are, we, how, how are we thinking about, we're walking our dog, we need to stop in a shop, we haven't got someone to stay with them. Should we not go in the shop? Should we do that another time when we don't have a dog with mm -hmm. us? What's, what's, how are we doing this in the best way for the dog? Well, okay, let, let me talk in general terms. It, 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 the lockdown bit is irrelevant to this, actually. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was just using that as a route in. Yeah, no, that's all right. I, yeah, that's all right, Mick. I see where you're coming from. Um, I, I, I have very simple views on this. Um, if we're going to go shopping, we don't take our dogs. It's very, very simple. And we certainly don't leave our dogs tied up outside, hoping that the dog might be there when we get back. Um, I'll give you an example. Here in Norfolk, we have a couple that are wandering around Norfolk. Um, they live in a caravan, and they wander around with a shopping trolley and about four or five dogs, collecting other people's dogs. Right. Okay, so, so, so they are stealing dogs, basically, and they've been doing it for a number of years. So, you, you know, people like exist. So don't, don't trust... Um, to the good nature of people because you know when your dog's gone your dog's gone and you rarely get them back so as far as taking them to the shops that's a definite no-no um and as far as just stopping and leaving them outside even for a few minutes a definite no-no yeah okay? i agree okay that, that that's a very simple no-brainer i'll give you another example i was at tesco's and, uh, last year and it was it was a hot and sunny day and somebody had parked, and they left their boot open, and the dog was in the boot, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a cage, an unlocked cage. So they were trying to keep the dog cool, big tick for keeping the dog cool, cool. A massive cross for taking the dog there in the first place. I could have happily opened that, that little cage, very quickly taken the dog, very amiable little puppy, and I could have been away. Yeah. So yeah, guys, the thing. And don't risk it. Don't take chances with your dog, period. Uh, cool, okay. Well, not cool, but you know what I mean. Um, mm. So, it's hot weather again, and we've discussed this on the show before, but yeah. A, we didn't manage to save the video of that, and B, always good topic to, to revisit. So today, yeah. it's very hot where I live, because it's a red brick building, 
Um, yes. I don't have a dog, sadly. But I had yeah. my feet in a bucket of water today because it was so hot in here and I was trying to work. Mm -hmm. Now, we do loads of stuff to make things better for us as humans. But yeah. let's talk about what you should do with your dog. So the one I always talk about is, you know, put cold water on their head. That helps a lot. But there are other things you can do. And that's worth talking yeah. about. Yeah. But again, remember, dogs carry and wear a fur coat all the time. And some fur coats are heavier than others. Um, as far as actually walking, pads are very sensitive. If, if it's a hot day, I strongly recommend putting the back of your hand on the pavement. And if it's too hot for your hand, it's too hot for your dog. Yeah, so you that's, don't, you that's don't a great them. bit of advice. Yeah, and you don't walk them. Um, it, and in these hot temperatures, you take them out very early when it's cool or very late. And not in the middle. And by very and late, and by very late, I, I, I've been saying to people, eight thirty, nine o'clock time, really. Well, let's put it simply, when it's cool. Yeah. And when it's cooling down. And if you do want to take them out in the day, th that's okay as well. Um, but you make sure you take them where there's water. So Ziggy, she, she, I usually walk Ziggy. Thank you very much. Okay. I usually, thanks, Wayne. I, I, I usually walk Ziggy first thing in the morning. This morning it was quite warm here, so I drove um, for 15 miles to a river that we walk with quite a lot. Drove for 263 miles to Durham. Yeah, we won't go there. We won't go there. <laughs> Good read, great stroke. <laughs> and um, and and I spend most of the time with Ziggy in the water, swimming, chasing toy sticks. I often yeah. go in with her, um, and then I might take her for a 10 minute walk while she's cooling off and. Cooling down. It's not rocket science, guys. Very simple. If it's hot, we keep them cool. End of story. And the other things that we've mentioned before is if you've got a paddling pool or you can get one cheaply that you can afford yep. to get, which you should be able to, if you can afford to have yep. a dog, you can probably afford to get a paddling pool. Um, get one of those, put that in the garden. You might find, yep. like with Dad, that the dog expects you to get in as well, but that's not so bad. Yep. Um, it's an excuse for an old bloke to have a paddle, basically. Exactly. So put the blinds down in the room. Yes, it. Put water, put more water points in the house than they might normally have. So don't just have one ball of water in the kitchen. Cold have... packs. What's that? Sorry? Cold packs. Cold packs if you tolerate them. Yeah, with the cold packs, you need to wrap them up, don't you? Like yeah. you do with a human. Absolutely. Otherwise, you get a bit of freeze burn. That's right. That's right. So you know, these are all basic bits of advice, but people don't necessarily always think of them. You know, like a dog panting is not a great sign. If they're panting loads, that's a very bad sign. Well, basically, dogs can't regulate the temperature like we can. Yeah, they just I mean, can't. Again, we talked about this before. Like, it's, an, mm. it's not true that dogs don't sweat. They just don't sweat very much. Yeah. But not to the levels we do. So, mm. um, okay. I've got a, diff a completely different question that I, I want to talk about. So, we were talking about... Um, we talked about before... I, I don't want to go over this one again necessarily in this episode. But So, we talked about getting dogs from from um rescue centers and why we think yeah. that's a good idea but an interesting yeah. thing is often dogs come from rescue centers with names right they've got a name yeah. already now some people might get a dog and really not like the name that dog's got mm -hmm. what do you do there do you choose to teach a dog a new name or do you just suck it up and go the dog's name is the dog's name well to be be, be fair with you i tend to suck it up unless it's re Unless it's actually something ridiculous. Um, I, I, I once knew a, um, a, a lady who thought that dogs knew their name. So she thought that you, you, you would just keep speaking names. Right. Hundreds and hundreds of names. And suddenly the dog would know, that's, my name. that's the one I like. That's an amazing way to use a dog. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, I, I tend to leave it as it is. Unless it's absolutely ridiculous. We've been quite lucky as well. Because I mean... Ziggy's got a great name. Ziggy's ne name is because she's got one eye different from the other. Yeah. Like a Merle eye, which is... I think she was named by, by a Bowie fan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, no, um, you, you know, you can rename a dog. I, they, they'll take it, but it might take me a little, little bit of time to get used to a new name. There's no reason why you shouldn't, from a behavioural point of view. Um, but me, I wouldn't bother. No, I, I, I would agree. I, I, think, I think obviously sometimes it's just a case of if the name is ridiculous, which can happen, mm. then fair enough. And there's no, there's, yeah, there's no sort of real reason not to other than it's a bit of an arm yeah. Basically, Trixie Bell is not going to cut it with me. Yeah, okay? exactly. 
But our dogs have always had it. The dogs, the names that they came with have always been pretty good and kind yeah. of suited them. I'm a yeah. big fan of a dog name that is basically like a person's name, though. Yeah, Bert and Fred Bert and... and Bert, Tess, Barney, yeah. Ziggy. Yeah. I mean, Ziggy's a bit rock star-ish as a name, but, like, it's still well, a name you can give a person. Well, she's indeed a, a rock star. I can't... Oh, should we in turn it into... If she's still there, turn it, because there's no people and they've not seen her, but... Ziggy! Where you, where you going, darling? No, I think she's uh, with your mother. Ah, uh, well, in she might room. come back. If she comes back, yeah. we'll, we'll show you her, but, um... Mm. Yeah, so... Well, Oh, Here she is. Hello, she's a good girl. And she's yes. bought a ball. Hello, Ziggy. You're a good Ziggy? girl. Oh, oh, hello, oh, friend. Yeah. Oh, no. What do you think about all that? You ears up. You look a bit of a squat. There you are, look. There you are. There you go. So, talking <laughs> about, now that Ziggy's back and talking about Ziggy, um, yeah. we've discussed grooming before, right? Yeah. And some people will, obviously, during this period... Some people might have dogs that have more, have had, have been groomed. Uh, <laughs> B says hi, Ziggy. <laughs> um, yeah, will have had dogs that are more groomed, that are groomed more often, or you know, have, have usually are clipped yeah. more often than they have been. Yeah. Given that it's hot, maybe you don't necessarily want to try and get out to like the dog groomer might not be available, the vet might, mm. might be available. What what what's your approach to that if you've got a dog that is used to being clipped, say? Well, that's a tricky one. It, it depends on the sort of dog it is, of course, because some dogs grow very long and deep fur, and they need grooming. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would make sure I'm regularly um, brushing them quite deeply, two or three times a week, actually. Yeah. Um, and keep it down as much as possible. Um, and if you can't get to a groomer, you know get some clippers and possibly have a little go yourself. Depends, depends how brave you're feeling. Yeah, I feel like um, there probably are YouTube tutorials that it might be worth checking in the same way that you yeah, check yeah. your own hair. Yeah. Um, I, it, if Ziggy w was a dog that I had, I, I sent to a groomer, I, I'd be cutting her hair personally. Yes. But you know, that's a very personal thing. So uh, don't take that as a recommendation from me. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and Z Ziggy's a shaggy dog, so like... Yeah. That's just her style. Although you do trim... What, one thing I think is really important, and I see people not do, is that dogs, shaggy dogs like Ziggy, can get... The fur can grow over their eyes a bit. You yeah. should trim that. Right. Now, uh, that's a good point. Uh, let me see if I can show you Ziggy again. Hey, Zig. Hello. Oh, you best girl. Hello. You're good girl. Oh, you good girl. Now, now, Ziggy is a um, sheepdog... Um, Scottish Deerhound Cross. So, so she, she has typical sheepdog hair, very long, and it comes over her eyes, her ears, her face. Now, from a behaviour point of view, people think that sheepdogs are fairly grumpy and fairly angry dogs and they're snappy. Um, w the reason that they are is because they can't actually see what's in front of them terribly well. Um, and also, dogs often respond badly to that because dogs operate very much on body language so if a dog can't see another dog's eyes it it, it can't work the dog out properly okay mm. so if you have a dog that has a lot of hair around the face you trim it so it can see properly keep its muzzle f f fairly tidy and around its mouth but really make sure it's got good vision yeah. if not you, you can run into a few snags yeah, mainly exactly. mainly and being a bit angry with other dogs approaching because they don't they, they can't see properly. Absolutely. It's just a, it's a comfort thing. And uh, like, I always just think, if my hair was over my eyes, I'd just be pissed off because I'd, I'd, I'd have to push it out of my eyes. The dog can't yeah. push it out of its eyes. Therefore, yeah. you've got to sort that. Yeah. But it's really... Uh, do, do you not think it's a surprising number of people who I, I don't seem to be aware of that or just seem to not like make that effort? I see a lot of dogs that aren't, don't have adequate um, vision. I... I, I, I... I think there may be a few that where, where they don't make an effort, but I think a lot of people just don't really understand what's happening. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that people yeah. are, are, are not bothered. I'm more saying I, I see that people don't realise how fundamental that is. Uh, ab absolutely. And again, I think it comes back to one of the things that we talk about a lot on here, which is like, it's quite useful to think about things that you wouldn't enjoy as a human, your dog yeah. will not enjoy either. 
So, like, uh, uh, this takes me to the next topic, actually, which is, so this week you put up a picture from a um, newspaper about uh, um, a dog that was being taken around by a head teacher to see kids from the school that she was at. And that's a really great thing, but yeah. you weren't necessarily sticking to some of our <coughs> fundamentals with how kids should interact with dogs. So maybe we can no. talk about that a bit. I, I got a bit of flack on it. I, I was told I, I was being um, on my high horse. Uh, I actually wrote a blog piece. On my website, there's a blog piece. That, that well, say the, t- say the address as well, because people might be interested to check that out. It, it, it's www.thecaninebehaviors.co.uk. You can buy me a coffee there. And go on the, the, the blog. And the, 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 My last article talks about this, and I just labelled it children and dogs. Now, the... the the, the, the picture re- relates to a picture that was in the Sunday Times this week. Um, and it, it's based on good intentions, actually, but a lack of understanding about dogs and how they see our world. So, uh, a deputy head teacher was taking his dog, known as the school dog, because he goes to school with the dog quite a lot. It's, it's a beautiful lab, lab retriever, a beautiful dog. And he takes it to young children, and they're youngsters. They can only be five, six, you know, early schoolers. I don't know what age. I think they'd be six, between six, seven, and eight, probably. So, yeah, okay. years, year, what would you say? Six, six, seven, eight? What years is that? That's years. Years four, five, six. Yeah, they're quite yeah. small. So, there's three pictures. There's the first picture shows the retriever being hugged by a small little little girl who's really happy and she's got the, the dog holding it round the neck like that, giving it a big hug. I'll, I'll, I'll cover why these, these are bad in a minute. Then the next one, it's the same dog in each of these. There's another young child. This, dog's, this time the dog is sitting and there's a small child on its back, sitting on its back, holding on to it and smiling and laughing and she, she, she's happy, which she would be because she's a small child. Then the next one, you've got a couple of children, the dog's sitting in amongst them, that's fine. He's not crowded, he's happy. But here's the thing. We have to look at how a dog sees our world, not how we see it. Okay? So there are basic fundamental, fundamentals here. The first one is generally dogs do not like being hugged. Secondly, dogs do not like people straddling them. And here's why. If you hug a dog, and particularly if you're a stranger with a strange dog, that dog may well find that threatening, and they have pretty much two standard responses. That's fight or flight. And if you're hugging it and grabbing hold of it, it's likely to, it can't run away, its next step is is to possibly bite. The other other thing to, to, to bear in mind is that A dominant dog will often climb onto the neck and the shoulders of a dog, push it down to dominate it. That's a threat. And that's what you're doing when you're hugging these dogs. Mm. And the same applies to sitting on a dog. So the picture you'll see, the dog, if you don't know what you're looking at, and again, I don't want to sound a smart ass, but if you don't know what you're looking at, it looks kind of okay. But if you understand body language of the dog, you'll see that dog is tolerating that, not enjoying it, tolerating it. And it can go from tolerating to biting in fairly quick motion. If you look at the, the little girl on the back of the dog, now if you look closely, do you, do you, actually you don't have to look that closely, you can see the dog's head is slightly lowered, the dog looks a little bit frightened, a little bit nervous. Again, it's a hop, skip and jump to that dog turning around and biting. You're, w- when you read in the papers, these reports of dogs that have attacked the child, I will lay you a pound to a pinch mm-hmm. that nearly every single situation has been caused by the adults allowing the child to do those sorts of things. So yeah, you're and, and, we, and also cr- uh, crowding, um, yep. overly noisy, uh, yep. goading with toys yep. which people think is funny like yeah. give and then take and give and take no 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 well no you you can don't get me wrong you can play with the dog and it's no, great. no you, you can but what i'm saying is is the kind of thing where the, you show them the toy then you take it away yeah. in a way that isn't that, 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 there are degrees of play 
And yes, yeah, that's, 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 they're that's, messing with the dog. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, if you look at the blog piece, I show that picture, but a bit further down, I show uh, um, uh, um, a, a, a little graphic that shows you how, how we would react if things are done to us. Yeah. And then shows you how dogs would react. Um, so a, a, a lot of people don't, just don't seem to get that. You, you, you know, there are certain ways of dealing with dogs. I don't care how lovely and fluffy they are and how well you know them. Um, you have to look through their eyes and understand Absolutely. what they're doing. Uh, Swain, thank you very much for putting um, Dad's website in the comments, uh, www.thecaninebehaviorist.co.uk. Um, yeah, do, do go there. Um, there's a load of good articles. Dad's written a ton of good articles about this stuff. You will learn a lot about how to look after dogs better and, and, and about how their behavior actually works. Mm. And as he says, if you like the show, there's a coffee thing there where you can throw him some shekels. Uh, and, and I encourage you to do that because eventually it comes to me. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm going to play the long game, but eventually it comes to me. Um, so... I, I'd like to cover one little little point here, if I may, yeah, Mike. Sure. Go for it. I was out walking uh, a couple of days ago with, with, with a lady I met a few times with a dog. She, she has a neighbour with, with a dog, um, a, a, a fairly youngish beagle, I believe. Um, now, this dog has bitten people three times. Right. Okay, and the owner doesn't think that's a problem um, and isn't prepared to do anything about it. Well, it is, it, it is a problem. It's a big problem. Um, as soon as the dog starts bite, biting, you, you need to understand why it's doing that, what sort of situation is, is um, preempting it, and you need to take advice. Too sweet. Otherwise, that dog might go from biting an adult, which I think it's predominantly done, to sinking its teeth into a small child. Can, I, just, um, can I add something to that? Yeah. Which is this. Um, what, what is this tell without, in a way that wouldn't identify the woman, what sort of woman is this, sort of age-wise and background-wise? What the one I'm talking to? Yeah. Who, who's telling me the story of the dog? Yeah, it's the not her dog. dog. No, but the woman who has the biting dog. Oh, she, she's, she, she's an older lady, I believe. Yeah, because what, what what this comes back to is, again, something that we talked about in earlier shows, and people who watch the earlier shows will, will know this, is, is that there are a lot of people, say, in inner city areas, right, who've got dogs, who if their dog did that, people who live around me who look after their dogs properly and are good people, yeah. if their dog bit someone, that dog yeah. would be put down immediately. And there yeah. are certain people who, who come from certain better-off backgrounds who have this attitude that, you know they're, they're they're fine and the law won't apply to them, but it will apply if the police if the dog keeps biting people, the po the police will come and they'll take your dog away and they'll have it put down. No, you're actually right, Mike. But the point I'm trying to make here is not necessarily about the the the, the, the people and the law, although that's relevant. No, obviously. I just wanted to make that point because no, no, you're absolutely you're absolutely right, before. No, you're absolutely right, Mike. But it, it, it's about understanding. A dog that's bitten somebody or has a penchant for biting needs assistance. Um, it, it, that, that dog needs to be evaluated properly to understand why it's biting, what situation it's in when it's biting, and you can do something to help the dog. And that's our responsibility. We don't just say, oh, well, it does that. I, I mean, because oh, well, it does that sometimes. It does, I we, we talked about the Polish dog uh, in the first episode, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah, so I won't, I won't cover it again. But most times, most dogs aren't necessarily aggressive. They often bite because of something. I think the other yeah. thing that's, uh, that's really crucial, and again, we've covered this before, but it's worth talking about again, is that a dog doesn't know a child is a child. Nope. Like, a child is just a thing to a dog. Like, a, 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 another animal to a dog, right? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's, that's... Very simple, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but, uh, but in the, for the purposes of understanding this thing, right, mm -hmm. you are just a big version of the child, right? Fundamentally, yeah. to a dog, mm -hmm. it's like a child is just another animal, and that child mm -hmm. might be bigger or smaller than them, but it's just another animal. Yeah. And that's a, that's a problem, you know. Um, yeah. So you, you've, you, you've got to teach children to be respectful of dogs, not wary of them, but respectful. Again, we had a really good chat about 
about how we introduce kids to, to yeah. dogs and I think we'll cover that maybe again in another show but yeah. um but yeah that's really vital it's just understanding yeah. that the dog does not doesn't have our our uh, awareness of what the world is the dog sees the world but in in a very uh well yeah. as, as I mentioned earlier Mike it, it's, it's it's not just that they are they're, they're canines they're not human yeah um they 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 are canines and they see the world entirely differently to us. They hear the world differently to us. They smell the world differently to us. They react to the world differently to us. And if we don't understand that, we will make fairly major mistakes with often very bad repercussions, not only for us, but also for, for the dog as well. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, and that's, that's, that's really important to know. Um, yeah. But let's, we, we always try and sort of bring this to a kind of, um, to some more lighthearted, lighthearted topics as well. Um, oh, actually, I know a, a good one. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, finding toys that a dog likes, right? And, and, and when you first have a dog, introducing it to toys and working out what toys a dog likes is quite interesting, mm. I think, because I'm, I'm, I think sometimes... What what I've seen happen certainly, and you can tell me if you if you recognise this, is people will be a bit like when they when someone first has a baby, and you just get tons of toys, right? Yeah, yeah. And you spend tons of money on toys, and basically the kid ends up liking a box or like one ball. Yeah. Um. So maybe you could talk a bit about you know the dogs we've had, how they how they relate to toys, what you know, the, the weirdness of dogs and, and, and the toys that they like or don't like? Well, yeah, no easy answer to this one. I mean, some dogs like to chase things. Some dogs like balls. My dog likes these. She loves a sock. She does love a sock. And every morning she steals these from my bedroom and she guards them with a life. I don't know whether she's frightened they're going to be running off by themselves. I don't really know. But I spend a lot of my time in the morning retrieving these. Yeah. Um, but she likes she to do that. Her, so. She loves her ragger, though, as well. She likes to pull yeah, it. Yeah. They're, 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 they're interesting. I mean, some dogs like to rag and pull and tug. Some dogs like to chase. You just find out from your dog. We, I, Mike knows this. We've had dogs. I, I mean, Barney, who was um, a beautiful rescue Dalmatian, big, big fella beautiful dog um we had a huge box of toys massive box of toys and the best he would do is push them over and have a look oh yeah, yeah. i th there's something never used to bother him i i i brought um a dog into the house a strange dog that he knew big sam this guy was a lovely dog now sam liked to play so sam came into this is when we were living up in chester Sam liked the place. So when Sam came into the house, he made a beeline. We showed Sam around the house and Barney showed him his garden. And he showed him where the food was and showed him upstairs where we slept and all that sort of stuff. And then Sam spotted the, the box of toys. He, he, he emptied the box of toys and just started playing with them. And Barney looked at me, he turned to me as if to say, what on earth is he doing? You know, so they're all different. And I can't recommend who wants what. Um, Swain says, Tar the Lurch is not convinced that the ball will come to life and run away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, I'll bet you, Swain, that when you throw the ball, she'll occasionally fetch it. Another time, she'll look at you and say, well, you, you, you throw it. Um, you can go get it. Ziggy, so, um, Ziggy used to love, love, love the Frisbee, which she can't really do anymore because of a leg issue. Yeah, she um, saw a complete ligament. So when yeah. we, we don't know. She used to love it a lot. But she, she, she likes to chase the ball in the water now. Yeah. She was a very high jumper. A very high oh, jumper. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, hi, Lily. Uh, Swain, she's never, she's never cooked, went for it once. Never, not once. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, um, that is just, uh, yeah, it's just interesting. I, I wasn't really... I wasn't really talking about it from a, from a, like, let's do an advice thing. Oh, Alfie, on the other hand, says Swain, just stands there. Occasionally she will chase Tara, but never the ball. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I, less really for advice. It's just a funny thing. I think it's just an interesting thing with dogs. The way that. Oh, well, actually, Mike, there, there is one bit of advice, and uh, this is quite okay. an important one, actually. Um, when it's sorry, to... Wayne. Alfie is a he. Yeah. It just. Oh. Says, yeah. <laughs> um. There's one bit of advice that, that I, I would give that relates to sticks, actually. Oh, well, yeah, um, this is good, actually. This is worth it. Yeah, I mean, sticks can be pr pr pretty dangerous items of equipment. Um, and they can stick up, they, they can um, be forced into a dog's throat, etc. Bear with me one second. I'm going to show you an alternative to a stick. Okay, one cool. Second. It probably is, yeah. Okay, we well, can leave it a bit longer. Right. Sorry about that, guys. This is probably original, lovely. You've seen one of these? Yeah. This is made by Kong. Yeah, I mean, it does look, let's be honest, like a sex toy. Well, I call it the wanger, but I, you know, that's me. <laughs> it um, but it is fantastic. It floats. You can throw it for miles. And Ziggy loves it, don't you, darling? Is that and it's, it's not expensive either, is it? As no, I it's fantastic. perfect. Ziggy, Ziggy, brother. <laughs> so I love that. That's mine. Oh, bless her. <laughs> that's mine. Yeah, yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's not that, that's a safer, it's a safer thing to do. I throw sticks in the water for Ziggy, because that's kind of okay, but I normally... Yes, I, it is a con, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a con. I can't remember what it's called, but um, I think it's actually called a stick, something like S-T-I-A. It is, yeah, actually, I, yeah, but if you look up con products, you'll, you'll find that. Yeah. Oh, so Brenda has a question. Hi, Brenda. Um, says, I really, really like dogs, but didn't grow up with them. Mum didn't love animals. Genuine question. Where's the best place for me to scritch them so that they love me? Say that again. Best place to scritch them. You know, like you scritch them under the chin or you stroke them on the back. Well, like, just asking about well, it, what's it, the best way to scritch them. The thing is, friend, it doesn't matter where you, where you scritch them. That, that isn't going to make them love you. Um, but um, if I'm approaching a dog for the first time, um, I tend to stroke them under the chin. Again... Yeah. I don't know if you heard the earlier conversation about dogs being threatened. You never approach a dog and put your hand over the head. Um, a lot of dogs, not all, they can see that as a threat. Mm. Okay, so if it's a dog you don't know, always underneath. Yeah. Little touch them. And in fact, I always approach a dog with the back of the hand just to have a good sniff. But they, they often like it around the ears, around the neck. You know, they're, they're, they're all different. Some, some, some dogs like the, 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 the above their tail being scratched. Most dogs like that, actually. Um, but just being generally friendly with them. Um, under under the them. chin, under the chin, though, is, a, is, is quite a good... That's the safest safe way to one. go. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I often think of it as a bit like approaching a gangster at a meet-up, right? You want them to know... You haven't got a gun in your hand, so it's like an open hand under under the chin is good. Like you come towards them with your hand mm. very clearly, um, mm. you know they they can see over the head they can't really see them, so that's well, no, they, they, they they literally see that as a threat. Yeah, that's you're, what you're, saying, they don't know where it's Yeah, going. you are. It, it's a threat. But but it, 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 here's a bit of a general advice. If oh, you meet a pause, for a dog, pause for a second, so I don't miss this. Swain, thank you very much. Yeah, the Kong. The link for the Kong is in the, is in the, uh, is in the chat now. It is called a Safe Sticks. That's it. That's yeah. it. Really good. And they, they, there's also a very squidgy ball that I highly recommend as well. Um, I can't remember the name of that, but they are fabulous. And, the actual, Kong, and the actual Kong is good. Yeah. The, yeah. The old school Kong. Um, Brenda says, thank you so much. So appreciate it. That's an insightful answer. Well, thank you for um, tuning in, Brenda. Really appreciate that too. Stephen says, uh, uh, with regard to the scratching thing, he's uh, basically everywhere I'd enjoy being scratched. <laughs> That's pretty fair. Fair enough. <laughs> Hello, Pickup Media. Thank you for joining us. Um, so does anyone else, if anyone else has any questions, throw them in the chat now. Um, so, yeah, last week we talked about Jasper and, and the kind of like 1970s uh, kids TV movie stray dog thing. Um, yeah. 
this week, I think we should talk a little bit about, and I'll introduce it and you can chip in after with your kind of thoughts about this. I, I often talk to people about this, how certain types of dogs, owning them is sort of like being the assistant to a celebrity. And that's particularly the case with Dalmatians. If you have a Dalmatian, every <laughs> child you ever meet will want to talk to the Dalmatian. And every person will say the same thing, the same comments to you about Dalmatians. Because obviously da Dalmatians are like the movie dog. Yeah. Um, and actually the interesting thing about having Dalmatians, or at least the ones we've had, is that they're much, much more disgusting than, like, they're very beautiful, but they're, like, the most disgusting dogs I've ever lived with. In, like, the best way, but they, 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 will, they stink the most, they eat the most random stuff, they will eat any shit they come across. They um, are monsters. The, the, the thing is, Mike, you're being a little unkind there. I know, I love them, but they're you, really you're, gross. You are describing one particular Dalmatian. Two of them. Now, for everybody who doesn't know us, we had two rescue Dalmatians. The first was Tess, the lovely Tess. Now, Tess is actually what Mike's talking about. Barney wasn't nearly as bad. No, but Tess, Tess, was, Tess, Tess was beautiful. He was the most beautiful dog you could possibly imagine. She was disgusting. Um, any smelly anything, she, I'll give you an example. We, we just rescued her, and she was three when we got her, and we live in, um, in Norfolk, so we went to the Norfolk coast, the North Norfolk coast, which is beautiful, and there's a big beach there called Holcombe, beautiful place. So we, we rocked up with um, Tess and Bert, our old boy, and we go up onto the beach, and this is the first time Tess has been anywhere near a beach, I think. We get down, and she's gone. She's gone. And it felt like she was gone half a mile or so. It's probably only about a quarter of a mile. But trust me, a long way. So we, we finally catch up with her. And when we get there, she is rolling around in the bowels of a dead seal. A dead, rotting seal. really seat. delighted. Yeah, and she rolls around. She's smothered in entrails and you name it. Then she comes back to you and she said, look at that. That's marvellous. And now here's the, the kicker, at Holcomb, the sea rarely comes in, and the sea is usually about a mile out. So I had to walk her right out to the sea to scrub her down. And she would do that all the time. Did we talk about the bit when she took the rabbit, Mike? Oh, well, I'll tell this story because I was actually there and you had to come out afterwards. Yeah. So, um... I took her to, oh, by the way, thank you, Lily. I will stop generalizing. And uh, Swain, I don't know if you've gone yet, but thank you very much as ever for, for being here and one of our best supporters. Um, thank you, Swain. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I went with Tess for a walk. I drove in my uh, my car because I was about 17, 18 at this point. You, you, you haven't had it long, Mike. Yeah, I was you about 17, 18. Past. I was about 17, yeah, 18 you, at this point. Yeah, you um, had long past. Yeah, so I drove to um, the terribly named Slots Hole Lane, uh, which is just outside <laughs> Attleboro. Um, really good country lane. Um, it's a really good place to walk dogs because you, you don't get a lot of traffic up there and it, there's fields on either side. It's really safe. They enjoy it. Um, but she caught sight of a rabbit and she went for it and she, well, she fucked that rabbit up pretty substantially. That rabbit was dead as dead can be. Um, I think it was a young rabbit, Mike, wasn't it, I think? I yeah, think but a young she, she, took it, she took it down. Mm. It was impressive because she went off like a rocket and she was... You in know, the middle and, of the field. Yeah, and the prey drive thing was pretty strong and she killed that rabbit and, that, and then the trouble was, once she had that rabbit in her mouth, it was not coming out of her mouth. Um, and neither was she going to get in the car, neither was she going to do anything. So I had to call Dad up to get Dad to come and help me out with her. Um, because, well, it's been different. Some of our dogs have had a kind of even... We'll put it with Ziggy, for instance. I'm as capable of getting Ziggy to do things as you are. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, um, yep, I think so. And say with Bert, that would have been the case as well. Yeah. But, he, but with Tess, Tess was very... <laughs> You were the guy with her for whatever reason. And although I had decent control over her when I took her out for walks and things, if she was in that mindset, there was no chance. So I knew Solid that shot. I had to give you a ring and say, you're going to have to come here. 
um, and you had to come and, and it took you a while to get the rabbit out of her mouth because she was very well. Like, actually, I, I, no. Uh, uh, what actually happened, Mike? You're almost there. You've forgotten a little bit of this. Um, you were quite distressed. Well, fair enough. I rocked up. I was just fucked oh, off. I've been I, there for a long time. Yeah. I opened my car boot and I yelled out to her, "Get in the car now!" And she ran straight up and got in the car with the rabbit. Solid shot. No. Oh. No, not with the rabbit. And you looked at me and said, "Blimey, how did you do that?" I'll tell you how I did that. And here's the secret. She'd eaten the bloody rabbit by the time I got there. Yeah, yeah. She just about finished it. And trust me, it, even with my alleged control, if, if she had still had that rabbit in her mouth, and I, we would have both looked numpty standing on the side of the roadside. Yeah, I, and I will say, basically, though, the issue for me was, that, like, I was pissed off because I'd been there for fucking ages. And, like, mm. you go out for a short walk and you're out there for two and a half hours fighting with a dog over a rabbit carcass. Let, let me stop you and tell you one more story about Ziggy and creature, sorry, um, Tess and creatures. Yeah. We used to live up in a place called Bollington, which is uh, on the edge of the Peak District. It's lovely. And, it's a lovely place. Yeah. And just above where we lived, I mean a few yards, there was a canal. And we used to walk along the canal. Now, Solid I remember shot. taking Ziggy along the canal and Ziggy would eat anything. You can't leave anything in your house, she'd have it. Tess, gone. Tess would eat anything. So, sorry, Tess. Yeah, Tess. Um, so, I'm walking along, and she spies a rotting rabbit carcass. So she grabs the carcass, gets it in her mouth. But I'm not going to let her eat this, because it's pretty, pretty horrible. And we're about two miles away from home along the canal. Now, I couldn't get her to release it, and her jaws had clamped like a vice. So I held on to the rabbit, and I walked back home with her attached to my hand via the rabbit, all the way home, getting some really odd looks. And I managed to get her home, Good still with the rabbit. She still wouldn't let it go. So I thought, well, I've got to get this off her because it's really unpleasant. Um, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll give her some of her favourite stuff. So she loved apples. Got to love an apple. Gave her an apple. No, apple doesn't eat rabbit. I said, okay. Kibbles. Loves kibbles. Kibbles, kibbles doesn't eat rabbit. Cheese. Loved a bit of cheddar cheese. Gave us no. Nope. She would only release a rabbit when I gave her the very best smoked mackerel. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> she was not a stupid dog. No, yeah. she was not. She was a very smart dog. But, but yeah. that, yeah, but that is very difficult when they've got that. Um, yeah. And, and a kind of a dog with a kind of hunting dog heritage, like the Dalmatian has, mm. will do that. And she went off like a rocket. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, was, uh, and the thing is, she was quite a well-trained dog. And I think it's probably quite a good lesson in the sense that even well-trained dogs, at a certain point, that all goes out the window. Well, the, the, the thing is, I, I have this conversation with, with, with a lot of people. And bear in mind, guys, I'm not, I'm not a trainer. I'm a behaviourist, but I do a bit of training as well as art for my behaviour yeah. work. But, but nevertheless, um, with the best one in the world, some of the best trained dogs in the world, instinct can take over. So, for instance, Ziggy who's now really had enough of this. Oh, bless her. <laughs> now, Ziggy, um, she's got deer hand in her. So if she sees a deer, she's going to chase the deer hand. She can't catch it, um, but her instinct will overcome her training virtually every single time. Now, I allow her to chase the deer because she can't catch the deer. I know she can't. So, mm. But her years of, of breeding to do just that, I'm not going to deny her that from a behavioural point of view. So if she gets to have a little chase, I blow my whistle, she'll come back to me, looking very pleased with herself. I tell her what a clever dog she is, and off we go. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so it's quite an interesting point. You can't, you, you've got to be aware that sometimes a dog's instinct and their breeding and their heritage can kick in. Yeah, and it's worth saying, see, I didn't try and chase her or stop her taking down the rabbit, because I knew she was going to take down the rabbit. No, as they go in the opposite direction, running at pace like that, very few dogs, unless they are hyper-trained, are going to turn around and come back. Yeah, this is the, this is the thing. But, but the issue for me was not, oh, she killed a rabbit, because I grew up in, in the countryside. I'm not squeamish about her killing yeah, a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. It's a question yeah. of you can't get the dog in the car then, and you're Nothing. stood in, a, in, a, in a, a, you know, a country road for two hours while she's eating a rabbit, and you think, well, this is... Yeah. Like, fuck this, you know. <laughs> uh, all, all 
also my attitude to it and my uh what I would call dad voice I I was 17 18 I didn't have that voice but I have that voice now which is yeah. I can talk to dogs that aren't my dog in the same way that you can now and get them to do things because there's a certain tone of voice that I'm very aware of and I have that deepness in my voice that you have. It's just in your past life, but it, 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 it's, it's, it's intent. Yeah, you, it's, but... It's meaning. Dogs yeah, but, know whether you mean it or not. But at 17, 18, you don't have... No. You, you probably don't have... You don't have that intent. You no. think you do, but you're still yeah. a bit trebly, you know? Yeah. But like... Yeah. Uh, now, I'm 36 years old, if I see a dog and, a do and I want the dog to sit, that dog will probably yeah. sit because it knows right, that I mean it. You're right, but people still think you have to be aggressive in your voice. No, no. You don't. When you, when you, I can get pretty much any dog to sit, um, and it's tone of voice, it's, it's, it's intent. You know, I, I've described it as, as, as the Sergeant Wilson um, method, you know. Sergeant Wilson would try and get from Dad's army. This is yeah. the sergeant would get people to fall in. He'd go, "Would you mind awfully, chaps? Just falling in now. Just form an elder. Yes, lovely. Just fall in." And most of the time, they'd ignore him. Now, if you if you adopt a similar approach to dog, they say, "Hello, Tess. Come and come and come. she'll look at you and go, well, no, you don't really mean that. I'm going to keep doing this.'" Yeah. But if exactly. I if, if if my tone is of such a way and and my intent is there, she'll pretty much always do what I what I want. As will most dogs, actually. I mean, to be honest, I, I, I think also, again, it's always, we do try to avoid making the analogy between children and dogs because they're not, they're very different things, right? Absolutely. But I will tell you this from a teaching, from the teaching experience I've had in primary schools and from the experience I've had looking after young, youngest children, so children between, yeah. say, five and 12. Uh, kids like me for two reasons. One, I treat them, I talk to them like I talk to adults. But two, I have intent. And I, they know I mean what I say and I say no. what I mean. I don't, that, I, that's, that's the key to it, Mike. That's yeah, the key. I, don't, I don't lie to them. I mean, lying dogs, the dog doesn't know if you're lying or not. But the intent thing, it, it's the same thing. It's like, if you say to a child, if you do that again, I am taking it away. But mm. you don't. They very quickly learn that you don't you you don't believe what you say, and in the same way, a dog learns very quickly if 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 it's fucking you around and nicking things and doing whatever or taking food, and you don't make it clear that that's not a behaviour that is acceptable within mm. the household. It'll just go. Oh, I'll keep doing that. Mm. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have we have talked a little bit about this before, but. A, a lot of the reason dogs do things is is quite often to interact with us and get our attention. Yeah. So, for instance, if I come back to the beautiful sock here. Now, Ziggy takes the sock in the morning, not because she loves socks. She takes his beautiful sock because she wants me to interact with her. Yeah. So, if I then start playing tug with the sock, one nil to Ziggy, we're now having a game. Yeah. Now, so if I ignore Ziggy and don't even acknowledge she's got the beautiful sock, she will let the sock go and she'll leave it alone. Yeah. Um, if, if I then go near it again, she's got it again immediately. Part of the game. Now, the, 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 the only thing I, I, I'd add to that is as long as your dog isn't destroying whatever it's got of yours or, or whatever you don't want it to have, as long as it's not destroying it or damaging it, it's just mouthing it, for instance, Leave her alone and guarantee you the dog will get bored with it and leave it alone. But if you respond, they've won and they've got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, no, again, you know, it's the same thing with kids. <laughs> In a sense, yeah. it's an attention thing. A lot of stuff is about attention. Um, yeah. You know, and the other thing, the back to the sock. One more, one more thing back to the sock. The other thing is. It's not paid by the sock company, you know. It's no, 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 no. I, I, I've only got ones. I don't have pairs anymore. She's eating most of them. Um, the, 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 the thing is, they're not taking the sock to annoy you or irritate you. They're taking it for a specific purpose, usually. Yeah, absolutely. And so, just as a general comment, it's no point getting angry at our dogs and shouting and yelling at our dogs. They are not doing anything with forethought. They don't say, I know, mix over there. And I know he doesn't like this, so I'm going to do this, and I'll really wind him up. 
Um, they don't think like that. They, they, it, it totally instinct. They, they, they're not doing anything to irritate, annoy, upset us. They're doing it because they're dogs. That's it. Okay, last, last question for today, and we'll try and keep this one short. Um, and uh, at the end, I'll just do a reminder of places where people can go to, to, to see what we do. Um, dogs and beds, right? Because it's, what is it? Been eight o'clock now. Dogs and beds. Yeah. Now, most people, when they get a dog uh, for the first time, they'll go, the dog is not coming up on the bed. The dog is never coming on the bed, right? Between, within, between night one and night three, the dog is on the bed, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, let's assume that the dog is always going to end up on one bed in the house at some point, right? That's just, mm -hmm. Let's just assume that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to work around this or just have a situation where everyone's getting to sleep properly? Right. Well, we're not going to allow that to happen, actually. Um, now, Ziggy here... Yeah, but hang on. Be... hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I, hang on. I'm, going to, I'm going to clarify it. I so this is my do. bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this, is, this is my bed here, okay? And Ziggy's on my bed. Right. But here's the thing, guys. Ziggy's on my bed through my invitation. Okay? As soon as I say to Ziggy, that's enough, off to bed, on your own bed, she goes. The mistake people make, I, I have no problem with dogs being on the furniture and wherever they want to lie, really. I've got no problem with that. But they have to be taught deference to us. Okay, so we're, 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 we're in charge, if you like. And so they have to understand that if, for instance, they want to come up on the sofa, now Ziggy will come up on the sofa, but she knows the lie of the land. Um, and she's been taught that's okay. But if I say no, she doesn't come up on the sofa. If I say no, she doesn't come up on the bed. So at night, I'll often watch a bit of telly. I've got a telly at the end of my bed. And I, I like to watch movies. So I, I, I'll lie in bed for an hour or so and watch a movie or something. And sometimes, but not always, Ziggy will come and lie Good on ball. the bed with me. Mm. Um, but then when I'm ready, I will say to her, right, time for bed, Ziggy. And I take her out, put her in the garden. She does a bit. She gets on her bed, which is one of the sofas, whichever one she happens to choose. Um, mm. And then she'll stay there all night. Um, but if you, if you start from the, the premise that I'm going to get a dog and it's going to be a real tight member of the family, which, which my dogs always are, and Mike will testify, yeah, um, very true. They have to work within our our way of living, if you like. And it, it, the the quickest way to get or, or almost like um, um, a millstone around your neck is, is to treat your child, your your dog as a child, and let it do anything it likes. It's got to have some sort of framework to its life. So yes, it can come up on a bed in the morning, have a cup of tea with you, and read the paper and all that, but it only is allowed to do that at your behalf. So I've talked this about this a, a few times. You must teach your dog deference. And deference is having them sit for every single thing, looking at you, and its reward is whatever you, you choose. Okay, so in this instance, the reward would be they would sit by the side of the bed and they look at you. That's and in the if garden you're in the spot. Mood and it's okay. You say, up you come. That's the reward. Okay. Right. Well, you have to be in control of it. As soon as you start, as Mike says, just let them do whatever they like. You're in trouble and you ain't going to get any sleep. Yeah, exactly. So next episode, we'll talk more uh, comprehensively about deference. A um, couple of things. We'll talk about deference and we'll also talk about recall because there's some, there's some specific things you can do to help your dog learn deference and also help your dog learn recall. And, and, in uh, fact, and in fact, every single dog should learn this. No, yeah, th that's what I'm saying. They need to know yeah. that. And on um, next next episode, we'll talk specifically about those um, early on before we do questions. Yeah, excellent. So thank you very much as ever, Dad, for uh, answering all the questions. Um, remind people of your website. www.thecaninebehaviorist, spelt the English way, .co.uk. Yeah, the English way is with a U in the in, in the name. Um, and uh, Dad's Twitter is 
at C Behaviorist. And uh, your Instagram is, I think, similar, isn't Absolutely. it? Yeah, it's the same. At, at the underscore canine behaviorist is your Instagram. So yeah. uh, that's good. Uh, my Instagram is, as you you know, because you're here, is at Broken Bottle Boy. Same on Twitter. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please uh, consider chipping in a coffee to Dad on his website. Uh, that's nice to do. Um, or even more so, if you if you like this and you think I have uh, things that I want to sort out with my dog, consider setting up a, a Skype consultation with him, which you can do from the website as well. Um, yeah, that's uh, and that is our show for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we've had uh, probably the best constant um, audience this week. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please say on your social media that you enjoyed this. And Wednesdays at seven o'clock on here is when we do the show. And uh, we enjoy doing it, doing it, and we uh, appreciate you watching it. Isn't that right, Dad? Yep. Thank you all for coming, everybody. Good night, and everybody. Thank you, thank you. For, for looking after us. <laughs> all right. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye.